Welcome to Season 5 of E-Commerce Fastlane. This podcast helps Shopify-powered brands to accelerate growth. And now, on to Episode 236. You're listening to E-Commerce Fastlane, the podcast show to help you build, manage, grow, and scale a successful and thriving company. Powered by Shopify. Listen to real conversations with partners and subject matter experts as they share proven practical strategies, platforms, and the best Shopify apps to help you accelerate your business. The time is now for you to improve efficiencies, grow revenue, profit, and lifetime customer loyalty. Please welcome your host, startup founder and strategic advisor, Steve Hutt. This episode is brought to you by Okendo, the preferred customer marketing solution for high growth Shopify brands. Okendo is helping over 4,000 of the fastest growing retailers, such as Kim Kardashian's underwear label Skims, Nomad, and Buck Mason to leverage their most powerful asset, their customers. Okendo gives brands all the tools they need to capture and showcase customer generated content like product ratings and reviews, photos and videos, including Q&A. When you're looking to optimize your buyer's journey, increase the volume and the quality of user-generated content, build a flourishing customer community, or collect valuable first-party customer data, Okendo is here to help you. Okendo is your all-in-one customer command center where you can track, report on, and optimize every aspect of your customer marketing. But they also offer many seamless integrations with the tools that you already use and love, including Klaviyo, Google, and Zendesk, to name a few. Join thousands of Shopify retailers who already use Okendo to build shopper trust and excitement, showcasing customer experiences and compel buying action. Start your 14-day free trial today at okendo.io. That's O-K-E-N-D-O dot I-O. Well, hey there, it's Steve Hutt, and welcome back to Season 5 of E-Commerce Fastlane. Now, if this is your first time listening, this is an e-commerce show where we have honest and transparent conversations about building and thriving with your store powered by Shopify or Shopify Plus. Now, if you're an ambitious, lifelong learner, which you likely are since you're here today, you're definitely in the right place. Now, new episodes are available twice weekly with your favorite podcast players like Apple Podcast, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, and many more. You can also stream current episodes, including a very relevant back catalog directly from ecommercefastlane.com. Now, in today's episode, my guest is Fiona Stevens, who's the head of marketing from a plus technology partner. So this is the real deal. This company is called Loyalty Lion. And what they are is a data-driven loyalty and engagement platform, and they help Shopify e-commerce brands to build longer lasting customer relationships that drive sustainable growth. And that's the important part of this podcast. Now, as a Shopify Plus technology partner, they create unique loyalty programs that integrate with their technology stack and really does add a lot of power to their overall marketing strategy of a brand. They're one of very few Shopify partners that are 100% focused on loyalty with no distractions. There are other partners and other different apps and solutions that are more of a Swiss army knife of marketing strategy. Loyalty Lion is focus completely flag in the sand i'm all about retention and loyalty only so they really truly do eat sleep and breathe retention marketing in today's kind of opt-out era i'm going to call it i believe they exist really to help brands to retain their most valuable customers and building these long-term kind of customer relationships i know will really outlast a lot of these privacy policies and supply chain and a cookie-less future and all the craziness is going on right now in the world i know loyalty line can really help a brand with that so hi fiona welcome to e-commerce fastlane hi steve thanks so much for having me here oh. My pleasure. And I know our time zones are significantly different. It's early morning for me. It's mid-afternoon for you. But you know what? I think where there's talent and there's some great stories to be told, I'm really proud that we're able to get together today and and have this little chat. Absolutely. I've been very much looking forward to it. I mentioned a bit at the top of the show. I mean, Loyalty Line is not new in the Shopify ecosystem. Those that have thought about or are currently doing some kind of loyalty or points or redemptions or you know, refer a friend program. It's not new to people. And Loyalty Lion certainly comes to the table when these conversations come up. 
But I'd love to hear maybe in your own words first about what you believe or know what Loyalty Line is doing today for Shopify brands, like the problems that you're solving. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, you've alluded to a lot of them in a very a lovely intro. Thank you for that. <laughs> Essentially, what we're doing here is giving merchants the tools that they need to create their insider community. We see a lot of customers who check out as guests or who maybe make one purchase and then drop off and never come back. You've probably spent a lot of money acquiring these customers, so it's not ideal to have them disappear again. So, yeah, what we're really doing is giving you a chance to turn your most loyal, most valuable customers into that insider community that's repeat purchasing, that's spending more with each order, but actually that's acting as an advocate and driving that sustainable growth for your business as well. Yeah, I love that. I love the insider community part. It just adds exclusivity, I think, to a brand. Yeah, absolutely. You know, essentially all shoppers want to be made to feel a little bit special, don't they? Especially today when people are looking slightly more outside of price and promotion than they have done in the past. You know, it is about those VIP experiences. Absolutely. Let's chat a little bit about the origin story. I had the founder on Charlie, gosh, a couple of years back. And I think the story needs to be retold, but maybe from your own words about how all the pieces came together. Like, where did this founding team come from? Where did the desire and the expertise come from to even want to create this platform? Yeah, absolutely. So unfortunately, I wasn't around at the time, but nope. joined a few, a couple of years <laughs> after. But yeah, our co-founders, Dave and Charlie, they met around 10 years ago. Um, I think they had an idea for a business in mind, but they quickly realized that it wasn't actually going to make a real difference. And what they really wanted to do was solve a problem that they knew would actually get worse and get more challenging with time. So I think they put the original idea that they had on the shelf and they went out and talked to business owners of all different sizes. And over time, a key challenge started to stand out for them. And that challenge really was, well, how do you engage and retain your customers online? And this was the perfect challenge to try and solve because they knew that it would only get worse as Amazon grew bigger and bigger and and sort of took over more of a market share. So in the end, I think, yeah, their research just showed them that e-commerce brands, they didn't have the tools all the time or the expertise to run a good retention strategy, even though they wanted to. And actually, it seemed like the perfect place to try and help. Mm -hmm. So why do you believe that maybe loyalty and retention programs that a brand should have like i mean i understand the benefits i mean I, part of my day job at shopify is really to be a trusted advisor and retention strategies come up quite a bit as hey it's important because the return on ad spend is going smaller the cost per acquisition things are increasing it's just lots of competition i just would like to understand a little bit about why loyalty lion believes that loyalty and retention schemes are really in high demand right now. It's an important strategy that a brand needs to execute on. 100%. I think it is the most interesting time to operate in the e-commerce space at the moment. You mentioned or referenced the opt-out era at the beginning of this podcast. And I think it was back in 2018, a very famous marketer commented quite publicly in the press that it was the golden age to work in marketing. The data and the information you had available that you could feed into everything from personalizing emails with just a first name to actually things like cart abandonment emails you know that data was oh, it was fueling everything that unfortunately that's changing now that window is closing but on top of that there's just so many interesting things happening we are honestly living in what i would call a perfect storm we've been through a pandemic we've seen the competition explode as e-commerce boomed that pandemic unfortunately isn't over. Uh, I think supply is now being affected by the wave and the lockdown that's happening in China. Lots of factories closed there. But we're also dealing with much more local supply chain issues closer to home. We have the rising cost of living and we have those privacy updates. And all of these things are making it harder to deliver on the promises that you've made to your customers. But they're also all impacting their likelihood to be shopping with new brands as well. So this leaves loyalty and retention as just number one on any e-commerce agenda because the emotional connections with your customers are the thing that can withstand those external factors. We've already mentioned inside a community, but you know that community will continue to shop with you and engage with you in between purchases. So you can be sure that when they do shop, they'll shop with you and not someone else. And I think that combined with just the rising cost of acquisition makes relationships with that community even more important because they're essentially the most effective way to increase footfall without hiking up your ad spend. Yeah. You know, what's interesting. There's a term that pops up a lot with a lot of my brands and, you know, there's different kind of buzzwords, but I'm thinking conscious consumerism. I'm thinking how a brand is able to have just almost like 
a cause bigger than themselves. Now, I'm not sure if this is on your radar a lot inside Loyalty Line with the brands you manage, but do you believe that maybe loyalty kind of goes hand in hand with maybe having a larger mission, you know, being an environmental or a socially conscious brand? Like there's a lot of these interesting words. This is part of the community building aspect and maybe having this sort of mission maybe that's where loyalty line fits in is that you have the infrastructure to manage this sort of community of people that really want to be conscious about where they're spending their money in exchange for becoming part of that community. So just would love to understand a little more about your thoughts around that. Yeah, I think for me that the two things, conscious consumerism and customer loyalty, they could not be more closely aligned or tightly connected. I think for some brands, it, it's very easy. You know, if you're a hair care brand and you sell vegan products to vegan people, then you know you've got that alignment. Your values are clear. If you're perhaps a sports clothing brand that's been around for four or five years, you may not have that quite such an obvious connection, but your shoppers are still going to be looking to you to see what you're doing, what to support a cause or to act more sustainably, whatever it might be. And the challenging thing for brands is, you know, you you can't revamp your supply chain and your delivery processes and everything overnight. You can't suddenly flick a switch and make your operations sustainable to work for the conscious consumer. You just can't do it. But what you can do is start making small steps with your loyalty program and things like that to show that actually you do care about the same things. And I think it's so important because shoppers today are buying with their hearts and not their heads and they need to know what you stand for and what you care about. But they can spot any kind of false claims or greenwashing a mile away. Yeah, I think your loyalty program is giving you a chance to take some of the smaller steps. And we're seeing brands do some amazing things here. We've got a dog food brand that allows you to redeem your rewards in the form of dinner donations to a dog shelter. We've got makeup brands that allow you to earn points for recycling packaging. Lots of planting trees in the form of rewards, that kind of thing. And I think it's just such a great way of really demonstrating that you are genuinely supporting the causes that your customers are supporting. And it just means that you're going to be able to build a longer lasting relationship with them and retain them. And they'll be loyal and shop with you because they know that in shopping with you, they're actually being true to the things that they care about as well. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that a lot. Let's talk a little bit about other loyalty solutions that are on the market. As Shopify brands have a lot of options available. I think the app store is sitting on almost 7,000 apps. You could do a quick search or even on Google. There's some notable peers that, you know, maybe offer potentially Swiss army knife of marketing strategy, but there are some people that I know that are tools and platforms and things that are out there. I'm just curious about how Loyalty Lion has been intentional to want to differentiate between maybe others in the Shopify ecosystem. Absolutely. And look, I'm not here to uh, to tell you to use Loyalty Lion over any other platforms. It's that like every store is different. Every strategy is going to be different and there will be a right fit for you. But I think the key difference between Loyalty Lion and some other providers is that for us, loyalty is not a new product that we've added on to a suite or a sort of a bolt on. It has been and will continue to be the only thing that we do. And every one of our team is focused on loyalty and retention and nothing else so the expertise that you'll get from every person you talk to whether it's the person that gives you a demo or to the person that's onboarding you when you start your program they will be an expert in loyalty and we tend to partner with other businesses who are also best in class and take the same approach so with any luck all of our integrations are built in collaboration with other subject matter experts i think that's something that very few other loyalty providers can really say hand on heart yeah absolutely I want to pivot a bit over to a story a bit. I think it's important to, I don't know, just be inspired by people and what they've used to build their loyalty programs. It's so interesting because I think we have education. We like to inspire people. We think about the whole customer journey. I think when you actually hear a story of an existing Shopify brand, I think those listening to it will go, huh, okay, that could be me. Maybe this is the piece of the puzzle that I'm missing. And so I just like would understand a little bit about how someone came to you. I hope I don't put you on the spot here, but it'd be nice just to understand a little bit about how do they find Loyalty Lion and like what sort of problems were they trying to solve? And then Loyalty Lion came in in with the technology to help them and then what happened on the other end i just would like to understand maybe some potential some results that happened with implementing your solution absolutely yeah i think we've got a lot of examples really the one that really resonates best with me is a uk jewelry brand called astrid and Mew. 
the reason that I feel so passionately about their program is because we've actually been working them with the whole time I've been at Lord's Alliance. So that's over four years now. And it, just seeing the program evolve over time has been absolutely fantastic. So when they came to us, I think they, from memory, I believe they just migrated from Magento across to Shopify Plus, and they were looking for something quite simple to engage their customers and really drive up those repeat purchase rates. You know, the challenge was relatively simple at, at that stage. But what we've seen over the last four years is actually it's gone from being a loyalty program to a fantastically loyal community of customers that's actually driving so much of their different marketing activity. So, for example, over the pandemic, they did such a great job of keeping their community really close. They were doing things like blogs and competitions and playlists so that they could engage with customers who might not really be feeling like spending at that time. And they also use that period of time to really start telling the story of their brand with their loyalty program and getting their community very emotionally invested in its success. So, for example, they featured a lot of interviews and blogs from their founder and other team members, again, just sort of signaling to people during the the pandemic, hey, it's okay if you're not shopping, but we're still here and we still want to connect with you. It's not all about purchasing. And then I think the most recent addition that I love the most is they've launched a silver recycling scheme for their members. So program members can get points for recycling their jewellery. And again, it just really resonates with their shoppers who are looking to live a bit more sustainably. I mean, yeah, I could talk about their program all all day. It's a bit of a gold star, best in class. They've got the loyalty program tiers, your available points show up on all the different pages. And when you're looking at products, they've integrated with their email comms really well. They're doing everything fantastically, but for me, it, it just goes above and beyond because it's all about their insider community. What's interesting is I actually went to their website as you were speaking, and they're even available in the U.S. now. So they are definitely are a U.K. brand, but now they have us.astridmio.com. And so I went to the loyalty page. It is quite interesting. It's hard in the podcast to talk about it, but you're right. They have, I think, all the boxes are checked here about our loyalty program and how you can earn points to gain access to exclusive treats and discounts they talk about. But it's very interesting, and all the different tiers are there and how it works. Like I think their landing page is well executed. It's definitely on brand and it's exciting that they're, you know, hey, middle of pandemic, it's a really good point about the fact that you may not be shopping with us right now. Fair enough, but we're not going anywhere and we're here to support you and still be part of that community. So I think that's really interesting. I love one of the things about Loyalty Line that's quite unique to the marketplace too. A few brands over the years, I've kind of always shown them off a bit to other brands and saying, hey, have you ever thought about having loyalty points show up from within the shopping cart of Shopify? Now, on the plus side, you get access to checkout.liquid and checkout.liquid is a theme file that's available to the plus side of Shopify, it adds a little more extra functionality and maybe even pushes people over the edge a bit and saying, hey, you're this many points away from, you spend a little bit more money, you, you can apply your current points. Now, it's so interesting. I don't know if you can unpack that a bit because I think that's another interesting, unique feature that Loyalty Lion has is that the known or the unknown customer, you're still able to kind of, obviously the known customer is the most important logged in experience. You can double check to see if they have signed up to the loyalty program, how many active points they have. You can kind of figure things out in real time from within the cart and the whole checkout flow. But even the unknown customer, you're still nudging people in the cart that you have a loyalty program. How many points you've currently earned right now and haven't even checked out yet. It just, we'd love to understand a little more about that. Absolutely. I mean, I think, we'd be lying if we said that the biggest challenge of a loyalty program isn't getting people to use it, right? I think (laughs) there's such a a sort of legacy problem of we've all got between five and 10 loyalty cards in our wallets from the days of physical shopping and, and we didn't get the best experiences back then. It's hard to use your points. It was hard to know what your points would actually get you. And I think we're all being left a little bit perhaps untrusting of loyalty programs as a result of that. So it's all about ease of use and simplicity and those seamless experiences. So exactly as you say, if you can show someone in the cart, hey, actually, you've got a reward available, redeem it now, don't miss out. Or you can say exactly as you said, you know, okay, you're 15 points away, but if you just follow us on Twitter, you could earn 50 points and unlock that next reward and things like that. Then you're going to drive up your average order value, drive up the size of the basket fantastically well. But on the flip side of that, you could be getting people to join your program you know that fear of missing out hey join the program earn points unlock your next reward 
And then you're one step closer to that person joining your insider community. They might take some time to get there. They might need a bit of nurturing on SMS, email, etc. But if they've created that account and you've shown them why it's worth doing that in their basket, then yeah, they are one step closer to not just being a one-time purchase, but being someone you can upgrade to your community. One thing I noticed that's unique too is that you're right, there's lots of loyalty programs that are out there, but the unique thing about having it from within the cart is that there's a possibility that maybe those listening today, they didn't have the correct messaging that's front and center that in fact you even have a loyalty program. And so I think this is another interesting touch point from within the cart to saying, hey, we have a loyalty program. You have this many points potentially available or here's how to sign up. And I think because the cart is usually so emotional and there's a lot of things you need to think about the trust that goes along with it there's lots of other like elements but it's interesting to have it front and center from within the checkout flow and for sure in the cart so people know to just put them a little bit over that edge that this program is even available definitely and i think actually it's the follow-up after that is really important as well you know you've parted with your hard-earned cash you've made a decision to shop with a brand and there's nothing worse than either not getting a follow-up email to confirm your purchase or it taking forever to come through or perhaps it comes through and it's just a blank standard when you know that's what you get from Amazon it shouldn't be what you get from an individual brand so there's a huge opportunity just within the post purchase as well if you've built that trust in the checkout you've secured that purchase make sure that you send a really good follow-up email that talks about your brand tells them a bit more about you tells them about the loyalty program either how many points they've earned or how many they've missed out on because they didn't create an account i think there's a huge journey that you can take people in on just after they've committed to that purchase that's extremely powerful in securing the next one absolutely and then you make a good point about wanting to send these post-purchase experience emails and stuff. And it makes me think about how nicely Loyalty Lion plays with others kind of in the Shopify ecosystem. Are you able to talk a little bit about, I think there's some intentionality about playing nice with Klaviyo or playing nice with OmniSend or there's other lots of other non-competing tools that are in people's tech stack. Are you able to talk a little bit about how Loyalty Lion is connected to these others and doesn't disrupt it. It just actually just enhances the overall customer experience. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a tendency for people to look at a loyalty program as just a standalone thing, an extra thing on your to-do list, another channel to manage, etc. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah, it is, it is another thing to manage, but it's actually something that can power all of the other marketing that you have. So, you know, from your loyalty program, you're getting unique individual data on an individual that you might not be getting from other channels anymore you know the more people opt out of tracking the more people say no to being tracked on an app etc the harder it is to gather any data about people so your loyalty program is giving you that data and that insight almost by default and if you connected up your loyalty program to your esp for example then you can start feeding that loyalty data those points balances tier status whatever it is you can feed that into your emails and that means you're sending you know, really unique, highly personalized emails that they're not going to opt out of because they appreciate that personalization. It's literally what they're looking for. Same with tools like Attentive. If you can either trigger SMS messages based on loyalty actions that they've taken, or you can personalize those messages with loyalty data, like points, balances, available rewards, etc. You're showing your customers that you know them, that they are individual and that you're marketing to them one-to-one. And I think that's when your loyalty program goes from being sort of a siloed thing to being something that's adding power to everything that you're already doing. Um, I think, yeah, email and SMS are just two examples. We've also, things like our integration with Recharge allow you to, you know, treat your subscribers differently, have a VIP subscriber tier so they don't churn as often. You know, subscriptions, unfortunately, they're going to be the first thing to go with the cost of living increasing. So what can you do with your loads program to keep those subscribers hanging around and the help desk as well if you can link up your help desk with your loyalty program and you can make sure that your customer support team are able to identify those insiders identify your most loyal customers and make sure that they don't get a bad experience or if they do it's quickly resolved you know one thing i noticed too i'll put this in the show notes but this forward slash integrations that you have and a couple others that are on my radar right now are mobile apps either through plobal or through Tapcart. and it's so interesting I'm able to talk about that tight connection with either of those two there are also plus technology partners many brands that want a mobile solution and we know the benefits of push notifications and 
other exclusive drops and things that can happen from within a mobile experience. I'm curious to understand about, well, how does just the regular web experience, the desktop or mobile versus what happens on the mobile app as it relates to Loyalty Lion? Hit nail on the head there. It's got to be the same, hasn't it? You know, you don't know where your customer is going to shop next. <laughs> We're about to commute into work. They could be on the train. They could be sitting on the sofa watching TV at night. They could be purposely doing all their Christmas shopping in one go. That will impact where they're shopping from. But the key thing is they need to be able to access their points and their rewards and their tier information wherever they are shopping. You know, you need your omnichannel experiences to match up. So if I have a points balance that I've earned on a computer, I want to be able to spend it on a mobile if I make a purchase on a mobile, I want to be able to build up my points balance and then go redeem the, the rewards somewhere else. So, you know, the key thing about these mobile integrations is being able to recognize that shopper wherever they are shopping and make sure that they have access to their loyalty program profile information, rewards, etc., wherever they are. I've noticed too, some brands are being very creative with kind of extra bonus points upon downloading the mobile app because owning real estate on somebody's phone coveted on top of the fact that you have these push notification options and other kind of VIP kind of drops and different things. So it's interesting that it sounds like there's a good kind of one-two punch, massive incentive in points and that points has a monetary value or, and you know, as you mentioned, it could have some kind of sustainability, social, environmentally conscious kind of direction of how these points are using. Download the app, here's what you get. And it's so interesting. So you can angle it very interestingly to get the download numbers in exchange for being part of this kind of insider community you talked about. Absolutely. This is what I mean when I say loyalty shouldn't be siloed. It can drive such positive behaviors. It can drive results across marketing channels that you didn't even consider might be connected. You could build up your social media following using incentives. You could build up reviews using incentives. You could build up your app downloads using incentives. You know, it's a great way to drive the positive behaviors that you're looking for. Lovely, lovely, lovely. All right, Fiona, we are nearing the end of the show for today, but like, let's talk about the future for Loyalty Line. You've been in business a long time. You have a lot of very, I would call them key accounts, but there's a lot of seasoned Shopify brands that are making their home on Loyalty Line. And that's, you know, part of their success is their loyalty program, thanks to Loyalty Lion. But we just would love to understand maybe what the North Star is, I guess, for the remainder of this year. Nice to get warm and fuzzy about you're doing a lot of great things today. Where's the current and future headed for Loyalty Lion? Sure. I think, you know, for us, we just want to make relationships the foundation of commerce. We want to help the fast growth businesses out there succeed by building longer lasting customer relationships. And we want those relationships to be built on the right things, you know, emotional connections, aligned values, and really great customer experiences that they cannot get from the Amazons of the world. And I think, you know, what you'll see from us in the future is everything will be designed to help you drive that customer re-engagement, to help you still acquire customers but in a more cost effective way when other marketing channels are, are becoming more expensive and hopefully yeah we'll be able to just give you more effective ways to deliver those loyalty promotions and campaigns that drive and power the rest of your marketing strategy lovely what about sweet spot because i think you know there's going to be i don't know 15 some thousand people listening to this episode right now and i think loyalty lion fits in a certain category of maturity and complexity for a brand and so I don't want to talk in too general terms, but it'd be just nice to understand, like, where's the sweet spot for a customer for Loyalty Line? Just so those listening today and like, aha, I've learned a lot today. Loyalty and retention are an important strategy that I need to execute on. I wonder if Loyalty Line is right for me. That's a good question. Um, I'd say if you have a product that people will repeat purchase or could repeat purchase regularly, then you're in the market for a loyalty program. You know, if you're selling mattresses and you're what someone's <laughs> buying them once every seven years or yeah. luxury handbags, then yeah, probably not for you. But essentially, if you've got a product that people are coming back and replenishing, then a loyalty program could definitely work for you. I think you could argue that the moment somebody has a customer, they have a customer that could repeat purchase, but also that could act as an advocate. So it's never too early to start a loyalty program. But I think realistically, for the absolute best results, if you have sort of an email list pre-existing, you know, you spent some time building that up, 
then the re-engagement of that list is where you'll see some real impact. So technically, I would say from day one, go for it. And then we do have a free plan to support that as well. But realistically, yeah, the people that will really see the value of an insider community are the people that have lots of people who've purchased their products once but have the capacity to come back and buy them again and again and again. Mm -hmm. Sounds like that RFM, that recency, frequency, and monetization kind of strategy yes. that I talk about a lot. It um, is 100% that, yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Much more eloquently put. <laughs> All right. So how can people learn more about Loyalty Line? Where would you like to, what's the call to action today? Where would you like to send people? You can find us on the Shopify app store. Just search for Loyalty Line or head straight to loyaltyline.com. We've got on-site chat there if you want to talk to one of the team or you can book a time to have a discussion with somebody and find out a bit more. I think in terms of call to action, I would be heading to our blog where you'll find all sorts of articles on how to guide, how to do things, when to invest in loyalty, etc. I actually curate a lot of your content. Kudos to your team because you produce like some amazing kind of, I call them even pillar or epic pieces of content. So I'm syndicating a lot of it and sharing it around. So, and that's over the years I've been doing that. So hopefully helping cast a wider net for discovery of loyalty line content on e-commerce fast lane. One other thing that I wanted to add to I know we had a quick chit chat in the green room before recording and understand that you would like to, I guess, have a, a small offer for those listening today to see if in fact Loyalty Lion could be a great business case and maybe you can share some of those details. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'd love to offer a free loyalty strategy. Essentially, we'll ask you just a few questions about your brand, what you're looking to achieve, a few characteristics, and then we'll come back to you with a personalized approach and what we think the right program might look like for you, what you might be able to focus on love it. I love a free audit just to double check. So if you're not in any kind of loyalty program at all right now, or you feel that yours is not being executed well enough, then yeah, I would take up Fiona and her team up on this offer. So it'll be ecommercefastlane.com forward slash loyalty lion. That will be in the show notes. That'll redirect you to their landing page. And so you'll have all the details in there um, about how to take Fiona up on that offer. So well, Fiona, thank you so much for um, coming on the show today. You know, I mean, you know this because you're so deeply entrenched kind of in the Shopify ecosystem, but Shopify really is on a mission to make commerce better for everyone. And, you know, I'd argue maybe even building a path that leads to more entrepreneurs, more independent retail. And I know Loyalty Lion is also in tight alignment. I know you really want to help brands to improve efficiencies and definitely growing revenue. And, you know, these retention strategy processes you have built in Loyalty Line is phenomenal. This lifetime customer value or customer loyalty. So I just want to thank you for sharing your knowledge today, your vision, giving back basically to the Shopify ecosystem. No, thank you so much for giving me the chance to. All right. Have yourself a great afternoon. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right. Take care. Today's episode was brought to you by Okendo, the preferred customer marketing solution for high growth Shopify brands. Okendo provides all the tools you need to leverage your most valuable asset, your customers, build shopper trust and excitement, showcase customer experiences and compel buying action with a little help from Okendo. Start your free trial today at okendo.io. That's O-K-E-N-D-O dot I-O. Well, that's it for today's episode. I'd like to thank you, a loyal listener of e-commerce Fastlane. It's my hope that this podcast is offering you a ton of value through growth strategies, tactics, and exclusive insider tips on the best Shopify apps and marketing platforms, all with my personal goal to help you build, launch, grow, and scale with Shopify. Thanks for investing some time today and listening to the show. I'm so proud and excited that you have a growth mindset and are a constant learner. I truly appreciate you and your entrepreneurial journey. Enjoy the rest of the week and keep thriving with Shopify.